This week on ANN, hundreds of church leaders gather in South Africa for a summit on sexuality. Adventists in Jamaica help reduce their nation's crime rate. And an Adventist church in England recovers from a possible arson attack. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, nearly 350 Adventist church leaders gathered in Cape Town, South Africa this week for a four-day summit intended to help the World Church better approach the experiences of the lesbian and gay community. The In God's Image, Scripture, Sexuality, Society Summit began on Monday, March 17th, as Adventist World Church President Ted Wilson urged delegates to speak the truth as Jesus spoke the truth and to remember that every word by his disciples should be a word that helps someone else become a disciple of Christ. We will bring you additional coverage of the summit next week. Jamaica's Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, shared his crime-fighting strategy during the Reclaiming God's Agenda evangelistic series on the grounds of the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church. In his address to Adventist members, visitors, and his security personnel, including the mayor of Mandeville, Bunting stressed how Jamaica's crime problem needs divine intervention. Jamaica has the highest number of churches per square mile in the world. In response to this, Bunting said it is a paradox to have the greatest density of churches and at the same time be one of the most violent countries in the world. The National Security Minister mentioned how despite many crime-fighting efforts over the years, crime continues to rise. He urged Adventist churches and all churches in the country to make a positive impact in their communities. The pastor of the Mandeville Church, Greg Baldio, said the church is making a deliberate and decisive effort to take the town of Mandeville from criminals. Pastor Baldio also gave Bunting a copy of The Great Controversy and offered prayer for his team. Members of an Adventist church in South End, England are pulling the pieces together after their church was damaged by fire in a potential arson attack last week. What would have been the beginning of a youth week of prayer with community outreach to the homeless became a service of healing and hope outside of the singed building on March 15th. Adventurers taped their thoughts to the church's door, pathfinders played their drums, members sang hymns, and Trevor Thomas, the pastor of the church, led the crowd in prayer. Police reports say the fire erupted around 4 a.m. on March 10th and looked as if it was started deliberately. No one was in the church at the time of the fire and residents in the immediate area were able to evacuate. Pastor Thomas says despite this crisis, Members are in good spirits. The Adventist Church will continue to have its weekly worship services and its youth week of prayer at the local Methodist Church. Two teachers from the church's Nile Union Academy led out 52 students in Egypt's first official Pathfinder Club meeting last week. Marcos and Anna Paula Lima decided to dedicate two years to volunteer at the academy through Adventist volunteer service. Once at the academy, the couple saw an opportunity for ministry. With its emphasis on Christian development, leadership skills, community service projects, and physical activities, the teachers firmly believe in the positive effects a Pathfinder Club can have in a young person's life. In the first meeting, the students were taught the Pathfinder Law, Pledge, and Song, and participated in recreational activities. At the end of the meeting, members of Egypt's first Pathfinder Club decided to name themselves the Nile Pioneers. The main goal of this club is to strengthen the Christian walk of all its members. With the ongoing crisis in Ukraine, Adventists in the United Kingdom are embodying unity and peace. Tensions continue to rise in Eastern Europe as Russia moves to officially absorb Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. Adventist Russian and Ukrainian members in London do not want to get involved in the strain between the two countries, but want to be supportive to one another during this difficult time. Adventist members from both countries have reached out to one another to offer prayer. Pastor Andre Balin from a Russian-speaking Adventist church in London said, Although we cannot do much to change the political circumstances, we are supporting each other as Christians. 
Two Adventist higher education institutions in the church's Northern Asia Pacific region will maintain their accreditation with the Accrediting Association of Seventh-day Adventist Schools, or AAA, until 2016. Samyuk Health University College and Samyuk University were able to address specific concerns from previous AAA visits with the physical developments of the schools and their recent changes in leadership. In addition to the accreditation status, the International Board of Education also recommends Samyuk University's recently developed PhD programs in nursing and public health be included in the school's accreditation. And finally in the news this week, young people worldwide skipped church on Saturday, March 15th to be the sermon on Global Youth Day. The annual event, sponsored by the Adventist Church's Youth Department, empowered the youth of the church to perform acts of kindness and service in their communities. Many throughout the world were recipients of food, clothing, water, hugs, and love from Adventist youth. Thousands of young people shared photos and videos of their outreach activities on the interactive Global Youth Day website through dedicated apps for Apple and Android devices. The Adventist Church's official television network, Hope Channel, also aired a live broadcast of the entire day and showed how youth groups around the world made an impact in the lives of others. You can also check out more stories from Global Youth Day on globalyouthday.org and on facebook.com slash Adventist Global Youth Day. Coming up, how changes to a legal precedent could affect debates within the church. I was with some co-workers the other day, and we met with the district attorney for Brooklyn, New York. He informed us of a program called Redirect that helps young people who are in trouble with the law to help reform their life and go back into society a different person. Did you know that Jesus is our advocate and judge in the courtroom in heaven? Following the death and resurrection of Christ, Jesus saw Mary at the tomb, and once she recognized him, she grabbed him and she held him tight. He then told her, do not cling on to me, for I have not ascended to my Father in heaven yet. Jesus had been the final sacrifice, atoning for our sins if we were to repent. He returned to heaven and his sacrifice was accepted by God the Father. Then he took over the role as high priest in the heavenly sanctuary to give everyone on earth a chance to be saved when he comes. Jesus is not a district attorney. He is our universal attorney. When we were in trouble with the law of God, he put us through a redirect program called atonement, promising us that if we were to ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, then put us back into society as a different person. I'm so glad Christ represents me and can represent you. He has no retainer fee, no percentage after the case is over. I want to let you know salvation is free in the sanctuary of God. I pray for the people that are sick so they can get um get better. All around the world, children are praying at 7 in the morning, 7 in the evening, and 7 days a week. I pray for um, everybody in Haiti that does not have a home. Join the movement in your family today. 777 Prayer Kids. During communism, corporal punishment, it was just the thing to do. That meant I have to put my hands out. And I would get so many hits on my hands that instead of having the dip, it was puffing out. I would pray that God would keep me safe. My name is Adrian, and my prayer was answered. Welcome back. A long-held legal exemption for ministers in the United States is under fire. In this week's feature from Liberty Magazine, Lincoln Steed explains how our church could be affected if this exemption is overturned. Thinking about religious liberty often means that we move our gaze outside of what's happening within the church structure. 
Of course, within our church, we have a lot of lively debates about things like women's ordination and uh, how uh, teachers in colleges and, and other educational institutions project our, our faith views. But maybe if you look outside, you'll see that some of these things could be quickly short-circuited and become almost irrelevant. For example, the ministerial exemption or the uh, parsonage allowance that's got a long history in the United States was recently successfully challenged by the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation, a uh, foundation that has no interest in religion, of course, wants religion totally out of public life. Uh, they may be a small group, but their legal efforts are yielding a lot of uh, progress for them. And recently a judge agreed with the foundation that the ministerial exemption is an improper uh, advantage given by the state to the church. I can give very good religious and historical reasons why the exemption is not a privilege but an acknowledgement that the church is not bound and not even indeed under the purview of the state. But taking away an exemption we may find quickly removes a lot of the impetus for things like women's ordination. We may take, find that taking away the exemption quickly puts ministers and other church workers back on their merits as servants of the gospel rather than officials in some organization. A child dies from lack of clean water every 20 seconds. To help shed light on this widespread issue, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency sent this report to share what the agency is doing to address this problem. In this week's Adventist Risk Management Report, David Fournier shares various ways to help protect the people in your home, church, or business in case of a fire. What is the most valuable thing to you? Maybe the question is, who is most valuable? Your church or school needs to have an evacuation plan in place. Adventist Risk Management has created resources to empower you to protect your assets, your property, and most important, lives. As you're establishing an evacuation plan for your church or organization, define two ways out of the building. Create a map of the route, display it prominently, and practice on a regular basis. A plan to evacuate the elderly and anyone in a wheelchair should be established. Determine a meeting place outside your building where everyone can meet during the fire. It is important to mark the lights for all exits for when you are evacuating the building. Install panic hardware on all exit doors. Clear hallways and porches of clutter and furniture so that they do not block the exit. Fire extinguishers should be installed according to local government codes and checked regularly. Make sure smoke detection and alarm systems are installed and operating properly to provide early warning. 
While detailed fire emergency plans help you guard your property and save your assets, the real lasting benefit is security. When everyone around you knows the plan and follows it, you can save the most important asset of all, human lives. Adventist chaplains face many of the same challenges and rewards that ministers do, even though their congregations don't meet in traditional churches. Jose McLaughlin explains. The congregation of a chaplain differs from that of a local pastor in that chaplains minister to individuals of many faiths and even to those that have no faith, whereas a pastor would be pastoring mainly Seventh-day Adventist congregation. Healthcare chaplains' congregations consist of hospital patients, their families, as well as the institution's staff and administrators. In a hospice setting, chaplains provide spiritual care for patients, families, and staff again. Now, in a military setting, chaplains may have oversight over a Protestant chapel. They may be assigned to a ship or a training command, which is the initial entry for military service members that we commonly call boot camp. Other assignments can include an operational command, a brig, which is a correctional facility, a hospital in a military setting, or a family counseling center. Correctional chaplains and campus chaplains minister to a broad spectrum of individuals who come from varied faith and denominational traditions. In each of these settings, chaplains must possess sensitivity to the beliefs of the individual. The chaplain's role is to ensure that the person's spiritual and logistical needs are met. For example, the chaplain will arrange for another chaplain to conduct services or sacraments for that specific faith group. Many times, as Seventh-day Adventist chaplains, we're asked to conduct or to lead out in the general Protestant service, funerals, weddings, and baptisms. Chaplaincy is a challenging but rewarding ministry as chaplains show compassion and provide ministry to all their flock. They will know we are Christians by our love. Are you up to the challenge and rewards of chaplaincy? If so, contact us at Adventist Chaplaincy Ministries. Still ahead, how to strengthen your church's online presence. But up next, how Hope Channel Ukraine took a leap of faith. As I was reading through The Great Hope, I came across this amazing passage. God has given to men a declaration of his character and of his method of dealing with sin. The power and authority of the divine government will be employed to put down rebellion. Yet all the manifestations of retributive justice will be perfectly consistent with the character of God. This passage brings me hope because it just reminds me of how amazing God is and how consistent God is. During a time in Earth's history when evilness and wickedness would have reached its pinnacle and its ultimate point where it can't go further. God's character never changes. I can understand why God would want to be brutal or why God would want to just lash out, but he won't because that's just not who he is. And so it brings me hope to know that God never changes regardless of how evil the world is or how perfect the world is. He's consistent and he'll never change. All around the world, Seventh-day Adventists are reading a chapter of the Bible per day. We call it Revived by His Word. With the new free iPhone and iPad apps, you can join in and read the daily chapter on your device. Highlight verses and share them with your friends via email and Twitter. And follow the daily feeds. And you can do this in English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Get your free Revived by His Word app now. I was once in the Chinese city of Shanghai. It was a rainy day as I looked out from my 10th floor hotel window. Beneath me, colorful umbrellas without legs were scurrying to and fro. Where were they coming from? Where were they going? Under each umbrella I imagined a father, a mother, a grandfather. Did they know about Jesus? I'm not sure, but I'm glad Jesus knows about them.
Welcome back. In this week's update from Hope Channel, Carmen McMurdy shares how a daily prayer program in the network's broadcast in Ukraine provides hope and peace in a time of political crisis. For months now, Ukraine has been in the news. It is a country and a people torn by civil unrest. It is a time of uncertainty and many deaths. It is also a place where Hope Channel has a presence and a voice. Pastor Demian, leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ukraine, reports, people are afraid, angry, and without peace. We are the only Christian channel trying to respond to the spiritual needs of society. Without being partisan, without being political, Hope Channel Ukraine took a step in faith and began a nightly live prayer program to try and bring some peace in the middle of chaos. For four hours every night, Hope Channel reaches out to make a difference. Using social media and phones, they invite people to call in with their prayer requests. Night after night, the phone lines are busy and the questions and requests keep coming in. By connecting people in Ukraine with God's promises in the Bible, Hope Channel is bringing peace in a time of war. For Hope Channel, I'm Carmen McMurdy. In this week's Tech Corner, Chip Dizard shares five ways your church can effectively use the internet to make a big impact for your ministry. Churches are finally beginning to recognize the power of the internet for their ministry. Now it's about online marketing, digital evangelism, and discipleship, and regularly connecting through people with email, social media, and your blog. Of course, if you're not new to church technology, this is nothing new. The issue is more about how to do this well. One of the most difficult parts about church technology is not maintaining what you already have, but coming up with new things for your church to implement and getting everyone on board. Every item I list is something that you can do to get your church on its way to making a bigger impact online. Number one, your own home-based website. This would have everything you need, including forms for your church, activities, and anything that automatically keeps a database of emails for later use. A blog to communicate your church's heart and a place to store all of your church video sermons. Number two, your own church app. While a responsive website is important and something that should be part of every church's website, an app is a perfect tool for your ministry. Not only do people always carry their phone with them, thus eliminating the need to print some bulletins, it also is a great way to direct them to your website, give them access to small group information, prayer group times, sermons to watch or listen to later, and all of this can be done within your app. Number three, your own way to online giving. There are numerous stats that say a church that invests in online giving will see an increase in tithing and year-end revenue. Think about it, a family that goes out of town but can still give, a college student that doesn't carry around a checkbook but they can use a trusty debit card. Number four, your own newsletter. Too many churches are still creating newsletter through publisher and sending them out via their mailing client. Then people get blacklisted, forgotten to be added to the list, or simply annoyed by the process. A great newsletter engine is your solution. And lastly, your own great website design. A terrible website is definitely awful to look at, but that's not even the bad part. A terrible navigation can make people not want to come to your site. No search engine optimization features make you hidden from search engines. Unstructured content can get people lost and confused and frustrated. No responsive website design makes your website look bad on a mobile device. A great website de design can fix all of these problems and more. This is definitely not a comprehensive list, and I'd love to hear more from you. You can leave your comments on my website at chipdesart.com website. For this week's It Is Written feature, John Bradshaw shares a message of hope through a personal testimony. I'm John Bradshaw from It Is Written, and if you don't mind, today I'd like to take the opportunity to share something with you of a very personal nature. I want to share with you what I think at least, and I hope you'll think also, is good news. A little while ago, a few months ago, I was quite shocked to be told that I had something in my mouth, a tumor that was cancerous. Well, what do you do? Well, you go to the doctor, the doctor takes it out, and then you follow that up with treatment, in my case, radiation, which isn't a lot of fun. And then you pray. Well, you pray all the way through that and lean on God, because with cancer, there's always an element of uncertainty. 
Well now, let's fast forward to where we are now. The good news is, my doctor tells me I'm currently in remission. There is no evidence of any cancer in my body. It's too early to say cured. We say that after five years. So now regular checkups with very good physicians and doctors who know what they're doing. So that's where we are. I wanted to share with you my good news and I want to thank you and anybody who might have prayed for me. It's the prayers of God's people that have made the difference. God is good. I want to share that with you today. God bless you. Now let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, the beginnings of the first Adventist health clinic in Peru, which continues to serve thousands of people. Welcome to this week in Adventist history. On March 17, 1904, the second Adventist publishing house in South America, Casa Editoria Suda Americana, was founded in Camarero, Argentina, by legendary American missionary J.W. Westphal. It still operates today and is the church's Spanish language publishing house for South America. On March 17, 1960, a ministerial training school opened in Ubon, Thailand with Sunti Sarajikol as principal. Today, ministerial training for the Thailand mission and the Southeast Asia Union mission takes place at the successor institution, Asia Pacific International University in Muaklek, Thailand. Nine years earlier, on March 19, 1951, Bangkok Adventist Hospital was officially opened by the Thai Prime Minister. On March 20, in 1980, Southern Publishing Association formally merged with the Review and Herald Publishing Association after church leaders had studied and considered the possibility of a merger over several years. On March 21, in 1906, the 48 Seventh-day Adventist church members in the country of Uruguay in South America were organized into the Uruguay Mission with missionary John McCarthy as superintendent. Also on March 21, but in 1903, Dr. Theron Johnston opened the first Adventist clinic in Peru at Juliaca in the Lake Titicaca region. In 1922, the clinic became a hospital and still operates today as Clinica Adventista de Juliaca, a 37-bed hospital that last year treated almost 30,000 patients. That was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, find us on Facebook. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide and find links to more stories, photos, and videos. Just visit Facebook slash Adventist News. Our good news for this week comes from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. The passage says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. That's our program for this week, and remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.